WJBW, Orlando, Florida. The first quasi radio web show. Wow. Yeah, hey. WJBWnetworks.com. Oh, my goodness. We almost didn't make that one. I'm a setup wow. inside of Hacienda Mastering Studio. So we are uh, live. And uh, wow. welcome to WJBW. I know that little raw intro there, but uh, yeah. we do persevere every single summer, uh, rain or shine or heat stroke, uh, to help promote local businesses. And uh, this is the very first stop on our uh, tour. Summer we're, tour. We got about six places we're going to go this year. And uh, Hacienda Mastering, uh, Matt Davis is our host. And That's right. it's uh, an incredibly newly built out environment here. But Matt uh, has quite been in the game for quite a while. So we're going to get to talk with him yeah. uh, here in a little bit. Hey, uh, what are we listening to right now? Minimal hey, who are we? Huh? Are we, is this oh, the JB Rev show? I am JB Webb. Yeah. Okay. If you correct me like I'm not a little child, well, uh, our I'm relationship just... will be better. Well, All right. Okay. Well, All right. you so, know, got to make okay. sure this goes Jerry smoothly. jumping right into the existentialist yeah, questions. Who are we? Where are yeah, we? Where are How are we? is yeah. life? <laughs> I'm drowning. He throws me an anvil. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. All right. So uh, welcome to it. Yeah, the, uh, the JB Rev Show. We work to help uh, promote talented people on the weekly. Over the summer, we try to do a little bit of uh, goodwill and go out to the businesses and learn about them, uh, help promote them with yes. a live remote. So that is why we're here. I am JB Webb. That is the Reverend What's across up? the way over there. Hey, like I'm, I said, we're set up in this studio, and I'm just kind of out of sorts here, just because I've, very much so. I've been working on a computer all day long. And now I feel like, oh man, I'm here again, and I'm in a strange environment. <laughs> but uh, Matt's been very gracious with us Absolutely. here. We're going to learn a ton I'm about. Very excited to be here. His his background and yes. uh, y- you know uh, a little bit about Hacienda Mastering, but Matt, how the heck you doing, man? This is a beautiful yeah. place. Thank How's you so going? much. <laughs> yo, yo, we're doing it, man. Doing good. Great. Uh, thanks we, for having me. We appreciate. Yeah. Well, thanks for having us. us. That's yeah, the big. Means- that's the big thing for sure. Um, you know, because we um, you know love to learn about business. This is a little bit outside of our. Um, a little bit outside of our uh, realm, like we normally go to, uh, you know, like a restaurant or open environment like that. It's always like, right. hey, let's come to a studio. Now, this studio is like a six figure or more studio. It's glorious. Um, yeah, and from Thank what you. I understand, you're welcome. Uh, it really is. But we're in here, so I know the acoustics are popping. So I've got to keep monitoring the sound because I think we're getting better sound off these mics than we normally do in yeah, my studio. Think? Yeah. I think so, yeah, because they're, they're built for it. But thank you again, man. Um, but how should we start this? We, we do I know a how local we legend. Start this. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, let's go into a song, okay? Oh my God. Yeah. That way we can uh, go ahead and do what we were talking about. We, do you have that set up right now? I think we should uh, ac- absolutely do that. So we're making get... him do work, man. Yeah, I know. But, you know, that's uh, what we really need to do. That way we can uh, get yes. the post out there. Give us and, some well, breaks. Open up. Uh, how you been, man? We've been doing a lot of shows. This is our first well, summer yeah. tour. Yeah. We're Last out here. Week, first we've... gig on the summer tour. That's true. All right. Yeah. So a little bit of smoke. You've been you, doing good? You, yeah, dude. Last right. week was great. You know, talking to... It was to, a good uh, show. Yeah. Remember who we spoke with you last got week? Your... Yeah. Can, before we get into it, can yeah. I just say yeah. like how cool to me it was that you guys had uh, Christian Yurik yeah, from right. Tortured Soul oh, thank you. on yeah. last week? Yeah. Like I listened to that and it was involving. It was yeah. amazing. Thank um, you so much. Yeah. You know the, those guys. We're, those guys are legends. We're man. honored, man. I, I'm a big fan. Yeah. of what they do and the whole era of house music that they came out of. Right. You know, like they were in the thick of it. Yeah. I, I've got a. I'm really um, big into New York house music. The whole continuity yeah. from the disco era through house music, and for me, like that early thousands era of like deep soulful where they were vocal doing new york house like that was the high watermark for house music yeah. for me yes yeah like if you ask me like what personifies that genre that era you in new york have it like that naked music kind of that shelter fusion, right that fusion i mean shelter. they cut their teeth at yeah, shelter okay. yeah Austin Wade did their first remix and it became a shelter anthem like that's a hell of a way to kick off a career those guys were yeah and from Deep what I understand, that's kind of where that's the from where you're at a little bit of your yeah, time. Yeah, I, I lived in New York for a okay. few years. Yeah, during grad school. Yeah. So uh, speaking of tortured soul, they're going to be here uh, July 27th. I are you know. going? Are you at a? Are you... <laughs> Ain't it a bitch? So um, <laughs> I just got this new sound system in here. Right. My friend, who is also a mastering engineer, is buying my old sound system. He's okay. flying down here, and we're going to drive it up to Massachusetts for him. Wow. And of course, it's on that day that we're. We're splitting down. Wow. <laughs> and it's a shame because we're both 
big time New York house heads. Yeah. If it was the day prior, like we would have been there with bells on, even though we were going to drive for 26 hours the next day. That's, we would have been all over. It's a shame. That's ships quite, in the night. quite the drive, too. Yeah, but you know? these are speakers you do not ship. No. <laughs> yeah, that that prospect terrifies me. Well, I'm super excited to get uh, a little bit deeper into your history, learn Absolutely. a little bit about you, because yeah. we do a local legend thing, and that's 20-plus years pumping forward in a scene in the state of Florida, we could say, or yep. local to yeah. us. So um, I'm eager to hear a little bit about that, plus learn about the equipment that you've got in here. You put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears and love into this. Oh, and then yeah. from what I understand, too, we'll kind of queue up. It had a little bit of tragedy take place and things happen. <laughs> How long you got? It, right? <laughs> and one thing happened, another thing happened. So uh, we'll look forward to getting into that and learning a, bit, a little bit more because you've also worked and still are working with a lot of uh, really, you know, productive, talented people uh, within the, the electronic music industry. I'm very fortunate. Uh, yeah. So we'll we'll tackle all that stuff in a little bit more. We are live inside of Hacienda Mastering here with Matt Davis. We're going to do here a, in the studio. Yeah, we are here <laughs> yeah. in the studio. We're going to do a local legend session. Let me tag you on Facebook. What track do you want me to play here? Uh, why don't we let's play? Uh, the, I think that Mr. Bill. Was, yeah, was, was really good. Okay, I didn't master this one, but I designed his studio. Yeah, so that, there's <laughs> and uh, he's a very good friend of mine, and I think one of the most talented people in the world. I'm really uh, impressed. You played it earlier, and I, you know, <laughs> I, it it's impressive in this room. <laughs> yeah, it is. What what was really impressive is when you when I first walked in here and you shut the door. It was like. You know, the <laughs> silent. Yeah, it was, it was like a vacuum seal, Built like a bomb shelter in here. <laughs> yeah, and my instantly, I was like, "Well, my ears are ringing." I worked and very hard to get a twenty-five decibel noise floor in here. That's pretty commendable by any standard. Wow, for, that's yeah for mastering rooms, let alone in a residential area. <laughs> <laughs> so you were talking about nut bleeding? Is that what the one? Nut bleeding dynamics. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not built. lining up. Okay. Oh no, it's in here. Well, that's uh, a tragedy. I sent it to your. Oh, reload the page. Oh, an error. Oh, Come man. on. What's up, dude? You're what sending you me these dead links here. Oh, well, are they from... Uh, uh, let's see. It's probably on sure. YouTube. Go ahead and try uh, you're spending, uh, you're, Sandra Collins. Yeah, was, I got dead links. Um, you're crazy, Papa. Yo, it's probably on YouTube. Oh, there we go. Look oh. at that one. So this one. Yeah. Oh, okay. So there, there we go. go. Right, Surely so. there aren't two songs on hopefully Spotify can, called Nut Bleeding Dynamics. Hopefully I can <laughs> stream it from here. All right. So you want to cue up this song for us? This is the JB Rev Show. We're going to take a little bit of a break, come back with a local legend session with Matt Davis. And Matt, cue up this song for yeah, us. Matt. What are we going to what are we going to hear? <laughs> so this is uh Nut Bleeding Dynamics by Mr. Bill and Primo. Uh this came out I think late last year. Um, and it's gorgeous. I mean, from an engineering perspective, yeah. from a compositional perspective, sound design, the dude is masterful. Uh, yes. <laughs> and the sound in here is just absolutely incredible. So I, uh, I designed his studio, like I said, right. um, Probably going to be doing mastering for him, but I think he's in pretty good hands mastering cool. his own stuff. <laughs> right, this is Mr. Bill. The, Mr. the Bill. artist's name is Nut Bleeding Dynamics? No, no. Mr. Bill's the, the artist. Uh, Mr. Mr. Bill's, Bill's the, the artist. That's right. he's, uh, he's on Dead Mouse. His old grandpa he's on Mouse here. Track. Okay. It's cool, yeah. man. Dead Mouse? Yeah, that's <laughs> nothing, Sham God. Oh, it's the JB Rev Show. Let's see what this does Yeah, for you, my friends. Thank you. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, all right. I think we got our sea legs about us here. Now. Okay. Right. Yes. There you go. That was a delightful track. Uh, tell us. Uh, you told us a little bit about uh, that on the front Mr. end. Mr. Bill. It was Mr. Bill. Mr. Bill and Primo. Cool. All right. Yeah. Hanging in studio with uh, Matt Davis, Hacienda Mastering. Uh, we do a proper local legend session. So let's. Yeah. We're gonna find out. So there we go. Local legend session, Matt Davis. Florida local legend. Florida local legend. Not no just doubt. Orlando. Owner of Hacienda Mastering. Uh, we're inside of his local business right now, learning a little bit more. He does a lot of great work, uh, specifically for the electronic uh, music community. Yeah. And he's not afraid of the uh, old acoustic uh, people as well, you know. Uh, he's got a great history and background. People. He comes from down south Florida a little bit, so we're going to learn about him. He's got some roots in New York. Uh, so honored and privileged to be here, man. Thank you. Yeah. Matt, welcome to our humble little show. How the hell are you doing? Pretty good, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. Well, it's, we thank you for having us in the studio yeah, again. The place anytime. is lavish. It's beautiful. <laughs> I try. In here. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So let's first start. We always learn to uh, love to learn about people's kind of origins. So um, tell us a little bit about you. Um, are you a, a musician in general? You seem to have a lot of musical chops with the, the mastering and everything that you're doing here. Yeah, I'm... Am I live? Is my mic in? Yeah. Am I? Yeah, you're on. Yeah, you're there you I go. feel Sorry. quiet. I need more go. of me in the, yeah. in the stage More wedge. you. I feel you. <laughs> no, nah, it's cool. Just checking. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I got, I got into music super duper early, and it was kind of like a curiosity to my family because none of them for generations did anything in music. Really? So I was sort of this, like, anomaly in yeah. the Davis clan. Yeah. But right. my family was always, like, super supportive of it. You know, when I got into, when I wanted a keyboard, they got me a keyboard. I started, you know, yeah. going at that, and then I got into stringed instruments. And like the cello, right? Kind of, and the cello. the cello, yeah. Right. I, you know, that oh. that was my principal instrument. Um, you okay, know. that's cool. That's a lot of rich tone in the oh, yeah. cello. Yeah, beautiful instrument. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that was that and piano were the two things that kind of stuck for me. But um, you know, by the time I was like nine or ten, I talked to you guys about this. You know, before we went live. a little bit, yeah, yeah. I, you know, in Florida, I think like 
rink culture is a big thing. Skating rink. Skating rink. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, especially down in South uh, Florida and then in Southwest Florida, it's also really big, which is where I'm from. I'm from Fort Myers. And I okay. used to go to this rink called Generations back then. And uh, some of the DJs, they had these like 16, 17 year old DJs in like the mid nineties there yeah, who yeah. were active in the rave scene in the area. So these lunatics oh, yeah, were playing right. like breaks and acid house, like <laughs> rabbit in the moon <laughs> to like nice. seven year olds at this roller rink. <laughs> wow. And it blew my little mind. Yeah. Like the second I heard that, I was like, I don't know what the hell this is, <laughs> but I'm going to figure it out. This is what I'm doing. All right. It's a couple <laughs> skate only, couple <laughs> skate only next is Lords of acid. I sit on acid. <laughs> All right, kitties. <laughs> Next up, we got darling Nikki. <laughs> Parents, yeah, right. shield your child's eyes. The wrong thing to have. The Jenna torturers, live at Generations. <laughs> so, um, wow. Yeah. That's, <laughs> is that where you first started to Disney get into like the, parks. the electronic? Thing? Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. totally. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. I mean, to be completely fair, my mom used to play like she somehow had like black box and um wow. you know 808 state records okay. back yeah, in the Pacifica day so she cool. was the one that initially oh. kicked it off but that was where i was like i heard it in context on a pa system and okay. there were like other people other than my family that were like into it. i was like this is interesting when you throw the lighting in and all the yeah. Other sort of, this is good. I'm into this. I don't understand it, but I really am connecting with it somehow, you know? Nice. And, um, you know, my first DJ mixer I borrowed from one of the rink DJs. They didn't know what to do with me either because I was like 10 years younger than them. And they were okay. like, this is a little weird, but let's just go with it, you know? <laughs> right. Okay. And then, you know, I started getting drum machines and synths and samplers because this so was. Cool. The era before really you could do much with computers for production. Yeah. Okay. And I, you know, I was. I was doing that. I DJed my fifth grade dance. You know what I'm saying? Like Like, the Tony Hawk (laughs) on 1200s. I had to stand on milk crates. Tony Hawk of audio engineering over here. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Okay. So the electronic music, you know, that came on real early for me. But like, I also had formal pedagogy and you know, instruments, classical instruments. So I kind of had a foundation. Yeah, a in back both. And forth, I lived maybe. in both worlds, um, and I think that really kind of informed the directions I went That's in smart what of them. kind of electronic music I like. Like that was one of the reasons I was so into New York, you know, deep house was because those guys they found the perfect balance point between live and uh, synthetic instruments in their production process. You know, they would have live electric basses, live Rhodes pianos. They would have vocals. You know, and right, they kind of like. Right fit perfectly and found this perfect symbiosis between synthetic and acoustic instruments and yeah, like sweet. that's sort of been kind of a theme kind of the rub through my career is, yeah and i mean that's why i like jungle too is because you have real drums yeah, you know yeah. that you've chopped up and rearranged there's like an organic character to the music that i yeah. think gives it indeed a, you know, we're speaking with matt davis here at uh hacienda studios by any chance did you go to uh villas elementary in Fort Myers? No, I did not. Where did I go? Okay, okay I went to Canterbury for the first uh, three years, and then I got kicked out of there for being a shithead, <laughs> and I went to um, <laughs> Gateway for the last two years. I was terrible. What's that Gateway? story like? I had, hell. I had completely unchecked that... ADHD, Oh, you were and, like, oh. and I was so, like, I hate to be that fucking guy telling that tired story but yeah. i was really bored yeah. with the material in the class like it wasn't yeah. challenging to me so i was That's, just kind of like so you just act exactly around me yeah. and you know they they drug me into the principal's office with my family they're like no, they hey. drugged you uh no <laughs> drag yeah, okay thank sorry. you yes <laughs> they drugged me down grammar to the is important yeah. for the context of that <laughs> sentence the principal drugged me <laughs> <laughs> and said you know i think we i think your son might have like a learning disability you should probably get him like iq tested so you know wow. my folks so prom- promptly there. dragged me to a psychologist and had me iq tested they brought me back they're like our son is way too smart for your school. We're going to get him yeah. in a gifted program. He fixed our accounting <laughs> software. I don't know <laughs> if that means anything, but <laughs> that's awesome, dude. But, yeah. you know, and okay. fortunately, they had like a music program at that 
elementary school. Gateway. And more importantly, really? they That's, had so they had a TV gateway. production program, which was my first oh. dipping my toes into audio because I ran the sound. That for makes the sense. TV production. Okay. Yeah. That right. makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and still here you are today in control, spaceship control. I, uh, yeah, awesome. I've been very consistent through uh, <laughs> through my life so far with what I'm into. Yeah, and that's that's kind of rare though too. Not uh, maybe yeah. more comp- uh, more uh, schools today have uh, audio AV. You know, a straight up TV they studio, but don't, a lot though. didn't have it back they, then. They that's don't one cut. of those things they've been cutting back. Well, I yeah, guess they cut it the because first of the, the internet, yeah. which is horrible. They should have an opportunity well, to the make a real deal show. They right? want to make the kids dumber. Oh. Yeah. No, well, you could do it on the, YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, if you're you going to be go, successful, you need to pay for it. Let's go start a show on YouTube now. It's too early in the show to get political, guys. we got to build up to that. Save that for later. None of you. All right, Inside of Hacienda Mastering, talking with Matt Davis. All right, so you're bringing us up through the trajectory yeah, really sure. kind of you know had a lot going on uh in in the youth whether it's with you know physical instruments and also kind of that digital audio analog uh y- you know electronic stuff as mm-hmm. well which is awesome so where um did it kind of break out for you where, where where are we at all right so you're doing stuff fort myers kind of moving from there yeah so that was you know pretty much my deal the whole way through high school just did your own thing yeah you know, i knew i wanted to go into audio by like sixth grade I yeah had, that's like, incredible i had like my my top three schools picked out in really? like six. I was touring Damn. these schools in like sixth grade, and it was the again, it was the weirdest shit that they had ever seen. Right when there was like a sixth grader touring for these Doogie Howser the of music audio. engineering Damn, programs. That's awesome, dude. That's an awesome story. Well, that's why I wanted to give you the local legend history. I think you know because there's a lot of a lot of substance there at the foundation. Absolutely, there is. That was one of the reasons I started with cello. Actually, was my top pick for. Uh, the music engineering program I wanted to get into. I knew that that music school needed cellists statistically. Oh. Oh. So they never had enough cellists. Huh. So you had to get That's into smart. the school of music as a performer. Yeah. And then you had to get into the music engineering programs, uh, specifications for entry as well. It's a rough program yeah. to get into a pretty yeah. rough program to survive as well. Wow. But, well, and the know. arts of music in Florida, you're a great, grateful to grow up at that time where oh, you're yeah. able to to get some of that yeah right? i mean like you know for the longest it's weird growing up in fort myers like yeah. especially during the era that i did because i'm in this kind of in between generation like the gen x guys they had the original rave scene you know right, right. and now there's this second coming of the rave scene that right. you can make whatever you want of. I'm yeah. sure we're all in agreement about yeah, the uh-huh. state of that. But like EDC, you mean? Like, <clears throat> yeah, uh, yeah, you know, okay. yeah. Ferris wheels and fluffies and stuff. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Go-go dancers and what have you. Yeah. Um, right, right, right. So, <laughs> and what about ticket prices? Can and ticket prices. Yeah. I mean, like... <laughs> I mean, wow. Yeah. Wait, How much I, was Zenfest? Do you remember Zenfest? Yeah, uh, I, I do. No, that was, I've heard that the was stories. still like a hundred bucks, but it was well worth it. No, yeah. that wasn't even close. Uh, to I mean, there's like, some was, really oh. killer festivals coming back. Like there oh, are, yeah. there are some really specific festivals yeah. out there that have really well curated lineups. So, it's like anything else. You got to yeah. dig through the cheese. Yeah. You know? you're and obviously right. the people with the biggest megaphones are going to be shouting the most mainstream nonsense. Right. You know? right. So it's, it's like digging for records. You got to dig through the garbage. And I think everything in a electronic music especially now that like the barriers of entry have been removed to getting into production yeah. and engineering and all these things there's a lot more filler out there but man it's like you filler. were saying last week you know the world of music is infinite mm-hmm. and i believe yeah. that there is music as we're good listening. oh yeah i do my homework all right nice very cool I had to see what i was getting myself into but right, right. you know i believe that that stuff is still there you just have to dig harder for it yeah i think yeah. you're exactly you right know? I think you're exactly right. It's like anything in life. If you know, if you want it to be good, you you really got to do your research. Well, a lot of a lot of the success is just that never giving up. And if you're looking, you will find something. We do a show. Uh, I do a show called the Circadian Cast, where we just play people's original music. Oh, and cool. They send yeah. us some stuff, but I go out there and scour and look, and yeah. I look for all the independent stuff, right? And it ranges. But yeah, that's a, that's the kind of thing um, that I think we see eye to eye for sure. The three of us, um, and I know the people that you know listen and follow to what we do over here, really kind of have that sensibility as yeah. well so uh matt what's a is uh, is you do you have a site up is it hacienda what's the best way for people yeah. to find out and then we're going to start to get a little bit yeah, more sure. into the studio what's the best place for people to it's just, find uh, out about this awesome studio we're hacienda mastering.com if Perfect. you guys want studio pictures if you're curious what they're talking about it's there i got a contact form if you want to you know 
yeah, reach out, about something. cyber bully me, whatever. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure people will be calling in. To well, do that your own. That well, it's not like you need a lot of advertising. I think what you do. I really work, don't advertise. Yeah, much your work kind of really speaks <laughs> yeah, for itself, and to. you got a lot of word of word of mouth stuff going mm-hmm. on, uh, which is you can only be grateful for that kind of thing, right? Because yeah. when one guy tells another guy, and you're like, "Hey, all right, so wh- who do I make the check out to?" <laughs> you're yeah. like, also, when you're in this, you know, form of entertainment, I mean, it's really your your performance in your work is your resume you oh, know what absolutely. i mean right. so all you yeah. have to do is listen to any of matt's i mean uh, it's it's, it's and... very hard to get you know formally credited these days because of the way that like spotify and all these streaming sites are set up like yeah. they credit you know the producers they credit right. the songwriters they don't really credit Publishing. the mastering engineers but fortunately you know a lot of my clients they're just so tickled with what I do for them that they just, you know, scream from the top of the mountains to all of their friends. Like you have got to use this guy. There's this um, label that I, uh, I've been mastering for since they started about two years ago called dance artifacts. Mm. And I'll never forget. um, I can't remember who the label head was going to use originally, but one of the remixers for the first single was like, Oh no, 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 no. You have to call Matt Davis. He's, he's the best mastering engineer in the world. And he told me, I was like, Oh geez, dude. Okay. Wow. (laughs) A lot to live up to. Yeah. You're telling me, man. (laughs) I was like, okay. But, uh, and you you know, I'm I'm lucky. They're really loyal. They stick around and they, they tell their friends and their friends come to me and it's really just kind of grown out of that. And I'm, very grateful for that because mastering is one of those weird things where I feel like if you have to do formal marketing for it, it's kind of like, why do you need to do formal marketing? You're kind of wasting your time on that when you could be in the studio. Well, it just seems weird because the music industry runs on nepotism and vetting and networking. So like if you're a functional mastering house with a core clientele, it should naturally be. It's going to be like funneled to you. Now that said, I think, Branding is really important, and I think that's something that, you know, uh, maybe not enough mastering houses lean into, again, oh. because they don't really need to, but I like having kind of a polished brand, and fortunately, my girlfriend is a, uh, you know, a, a senior branding consultant, Yeah. so <laughs> I've... Uh, I've kind of. Yeah, I was getting ready to look smart. at your logo. Yeah, let me. Just but then there was a. Yeah, oh, he's bringing it. His uh, his monitor <laughs> because, there, there did, went to sleep. We've been talking. Oh yeah, talking for that's a awesome. Long. And the, the hacienda. And, and you it, notice like, we have a unified color scheme. Oh yeah, on everything oh, yeah. in here, which is uh, kind of that warm gradient that uh, it's eight oh eight colors. Oh, there you go. <laughs> it's there. TR eight oh eight colors. That's and kind of that that's out. sort of my brand. That's your I whole guess. thing. Yeah. So how? Uh, so should we? Where, where are we at? Kind of <laughs> in the cool. trajectory. Uh, you're coming up. Uh, w- when did when did Hacienda? How old is Hacienda Master? Um, we're coming up on ten years. Damn. Wow, we've been around for Damn. nine years now. That's like as old as our show. <laughs> okay, sure. and awesome. I'm sh- I'm sure you're wondering, wow. Jerry. All the synths and drum machines and samplers, yeah. they're upstairs. We're okay. we're fresh out of a build out in okay. here. I've revised the acoustic design of the yeah, room. Yeah, he told me. He's for like, like the 18th time, and we haven't gotten around to bringing bring, the synths back in because my clients were waiting uh, with deadlines. So right, right. I haven't gotcha. gotten to that point yet, but they're up there. Well, yeah. uh, I mean, just the the feel, and like I said, when when we, I first walked in here, just that vacuum seal, mm-hmm. and it's just <laughs> <Yeah>. like <laughs> people I mean, with tinnitus hate this room. Well, yeah, that's the first thing I told you, I'm like, well, my ears are ringing. <laughs> so obviously, oh, but it's, it's so cozy. Yeah, I mean, you so. settle in and listen to music in here. It's like so incredibly involving. It's. It's almost like it's a surround system, even though there's two speakers. It just kind of... It's absolutely... It's what you know, I love about these speakers. It kind of hugs you, you It's know? like an envelope, yeah. you know? It's like, it's really yeah. Well, and I'd even love to get, um, you know, into that a little bit deeper, totally. kind of, as we go. I would love to rant about yeah, like, <laughs> the acoustic design so of this room. Yeah, because I know at the Reverends, he's got that sweet spot at his house, where you, yeah, he's <laughs> like, sit right here, watch yeah. this, well, listen to this. there's a sweet spot in the and studio. There, there is yes, a sweet there spot. Is. Yeah, and it's it's always a sweet spot. Like, maybe a little closer. I'm almost there. I think <laughs> sit right here on my lap. Right? Yeah, no, that's not uh, your yep. sweet spot. Right. <laughs> that's not your sweet Sour spot. Oh my spot god! Right there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Uh, so yeah. So uh, ten years ago. All right. And does that catch up with the track? Or didn't you say you spent some time in New York? Or, or how does yeah, that all fix yeah. it? So, so keep us linear on. So this. okay, I, I spent three and a half years uh, in Miami okay. um, for undergrad at, at University of Miami. Yeah. Their engineering program is. Uh, at least the best in the United States. A lot of people say the best in the world. They get like wow. 
hundreds and hundreds of applicants. They take 20 kids every year and they usually fail about half of them out in the first year. It's, it's brutal. But you know, I did that for three and a half years. I got a minor in electrical engineering. I was pretty close to completing a double major in electrical engineering. Uh, and then after that, I spent a summer catching my breath in Fort yeah. Myers, recorded some music with my friends, hung out, whatever. And then I uh, <laughs> shipped off immediately for grad school at NYU, again, wow. in audio. Um, and I did that over the following two years. And I ran a uh, a hip-hop tracking studio really? in Brooklyn, yeah, in Bushwick, oh, back damn. before they cleaned it up, back when it was still fun, you yeah, know? Little gritty. And you could get, like, 2,000 square feet of open <laughs> floor plan for, like, 2,000 a month. It was wow. amazing. Wow. <laughs> this building that we yeah. built, that Not we anymore. had the studio in, yeah. like, they, it was a, a converted tea factory. It was really? called the tea factory. And what they did is they made these open plan lofts. It was just wide open and you could just build it out however you wanted. They would That's come cool. in and like bang up some stud work and drywall and like build out rooms. So I built a three room studio in yeah. there and, um, you know, and there were quarters for my staff and me and my girlfriend and, uh, it was cool. It was it was this kind of collective thing. You know, I had this great studio manager who just knew everybody in the hip hop scene oh, really? in New York. Just amazing. And, That's cool. And I had this other friend who was this incredible event promoter, just unbelievably good at getting people to show up to events. Yeah. Like uncanny. I found out about it. I was friends with him. Um, leading up to the the opening party for my studio, and I'll never forget like two hours before. Sorry, he's like, "Hey man, can I can I invite some friends to this? Can, <laughs> yeah. I, can I have some friends come?" To, you know, this was like a opening party, like yeah. an intimate champagne and stuff. Party. Yeah, right. I was like, "Yeah, no problem, man." Swear to God, two hours later, there were three hundred kids oh lined God. up outside the door of the place with money in hand to get oh. in. I was like. Jaqua, do not ever do this to me again in my uh, studio. Yeah. <laughs> but we are going to work trash together. The place. Come on, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> Let's go. We survive. By the grace wow. of God, we survived that party. But after that, once the studio was in good shape and we started pulling in some money, we rented the loft next to ours and we left it empty and we started throwing loft parties in there that nice. he promoted for. And, uh, and these were hip hop, and it was uh, you, you know, know it Brooklyn? was it was really interesting. It was open format, so, and oh, okay. what does that? So well, what does that mean then? Like, well, I had like up, up. I had a few friends, uh, you know, there were DJs in the area. Yeah. They would come in and they would play some hip hop. I would play some hip hop. They play some you know reggaeton, Latin music, okay. kind of the rounds, and then at midnight I would go on with uh one of my mcs or sometimes two of my mcs okay um and i would play dubstep like dj really yeah and they would mc over it really yeah wow and we kind of accidentally created a pseudo grime scene in really in brooklyn doing that what year was this this would have been 2009 okay so about 10 years ago yeah i mean it was before dubstep when you know mainstream before right. american dubstep really kicked off it was like that interim after dr p's sweet shop came out uh, okay. before everything else sounded like that right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. I've, I've kind of like gone through a lot of different styles of music in my life and you know i i still love all of them well, but that I that's the picked up an eclectic uh repertoire see that that's the um the sign of a really good musician prom- you know producer is someone that's not just wrapped up into one particular genre oh, yeah. you know because that's basically you've got blinders on you're you're you've, you're narrow-minded is basically what sure. that you know represents so anytime that you know uh, I talked to someone and they let me know that, you know, well, I'm kind of in everything. And then I, I right away can connect with that. Oh, yeah. Whereas if someone says, oh, man, I'm strictly, you know, breaks. Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, I'm really you know, open minded. I love jazz. I love. Yeah. Uh, and that's, Bossa Nova. That's a sign of intelligence is I, being open minded. I love open-minded. classical music. There's even some you know? rock music that I can get down with that. Right. On it, Oddly enough, that's kind of the one thing I never got into. I really? never had a guitar phase because oh, really? I've been into electronic music since I was a little kid. Right. So, like, usually when you grow up, yeah. you have a rock phase, you... you know, and then you grow out of that yeah. and sort of, like, widen your horizons yeah. but are still into rock. I never really had that. That's interesting. So that is interesting. Maybe like, you'll have that when you're a little older or something It's the like weirdest that. thing. I just can't... Um, 
reconciled distorted guitars. Now I what love I straight fuck, up acoustic. Yeah, I love Pat Metheny. Okay. Like that clean guitar tone. Yeah, right, I love, right. love that. I just never figured out how to like distorted guitars yeah. for whatever reason. Which is weird from a drum and bass guy, I guess. Yeah. Know? I guess so. You would think you'd have more of a there and even hip hop too. A lot of hip hop, it's got you know. Yeah, totally. Uh, it's weird. I know. I, I never huh. really liked country. I God, I take back everything I said. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry <laughs> I let you down. <laughs> uh, All right. Well, we're speaking with Matt Davis here. We're at uh, Hossie and the Mastering. Yeah, here. this is great. Um, yeah. So uh, let's. So that get takes in... us into New yeah, York. Yeah. So let's. Right. So that's New York. That's okay. through New York. And yep. then, okay. And then then you came back here. So that that's where things get kind of interesting. Um. Oh, it's been interesting so far. <laughs> yeah, it's been pretty. <laughs> so, I got a, I got done with grad school, and it, an interesting thing before I uh, before I went to grad school, I had interesting timing. I've had historically terrible timing in everything I've done okay. so far in my career, for All the right. most part. You know, like <laughs> right. it doesn't I, seem like it's sitting I, in his studio. But look, go, I caught a come ahead. up lately. Things okay. are changing. Okay. But, okay. but you know, I got into like these '90s styles of music yeah. right when they went out of vogue, <laughs> and I started making that type of music. I was making Piano House in 2005. Yeah. You All know, right. like you okay. may as well be trying to sell fax machines to Fair people. Enough. You know, <laughs> um, and when I when I went in to undergrad, that was kind of the advent of the MP3 thing okay. in distribution. Yeah. So by the time I got out of undergrad, I was like, huh, all the big studios are shutting down. That blows. I'm going to double down on this and buy myself uh, time uh, and go to grad school. Wow. <laughs> so by the time I got out of grad school, obviously, like, the whole industry had tanked, Just right? And right. for the, and yeah. for the life of me, I could not get a call back from anybody. Because here's the thing. Um, how candid do I want to be about this? Yeah. Audio degrees can get you somewhere in right. Congress with internships that are relevant right. and, you know, other sort of free work. Okay. I didn't free really, work, yeah. I was kind of... Um, I had a bit of an ego to me, as okay. most 21-year-olds sure. do. Right, and I right. was too busy cutting records with my friends you know making music on nights and weekends yeah. like, you know you don't I, want to give that up i did some yeah. dumb little internships to fulfill my requirement for school but i yeah. i never did much on that front and most of my portfolio was my own music so i get out of grad school uh still can't get calls back from anybody because now i've like over specialized in a field that i have no formal work experience in right. which is a, uh. just an awful combination if anybody out here is listening that's impressionable don't do that that's yeah. like a bad <laughs> way to go about it don't so, yeah. so, so take so the shotgun approach right? yeah uh, you know it's yeah fair it, enough it's good to specialize it worked out for you but it was not easy coming. The timing. So the next yeah, few years for me were kind of a struggle because I put out a million resumes, made a million calls, never got a call back from anybody. You know? Right. So at first, you know, I got real depressed and real jaded and was like, sure. wow, I just graduated from hell? like the two most miserable audio programs <laughs> in the world Jeez. and I can't get a damn job with a master's, you know? But that frustrates Obama. Is that it? No. Obama. It was Trump now. Yeah, you got to blame Trump. Anyway, all right. <laughs> um, so out of that frustration grew determination, and I started scraping my pennies together and trying to come up with a game plan. I was like, okay, nobody's going to give me a job. I got to make a job, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. My last semester at NYU, I took a mastering course, the only mastering course I ever took. They're actually very rare in oh. academia. It's okay. a pretty guarded field, which really? was kind of my appeal to it. But my professor in that course was Alan Silverman, who's a very famous Grammy-winning mm -hmm. mastering engineer. And, oh, man, I, really? I wish I could be as wow. you know impactful on my students as he is on his because he immediately I was like okay that is what I'm doing you have you know like I'm 100% positive be like that this guy. is what I want to yeah. do I've, I'd never had that you know okay. since the roller rink and electronic right, music right. okay and you know also during that time I had a record label that um you know we had minor successes with some yeah. of my friends got pretty famous oh, really? that I found for that label guys like Machine Girl and Spin oh. Scott um, nice. who's one of the most famous MPC drummers in the world. I was the yeah. label that discovered him. Really? And helped him get a foothold. I love that. Yeah. Um, 
But uh, yeah, so like I started with the label because I was like, I I had one that I I put out like one vinyl release uh, in undergrad and I did a couple digital releases, uh, you know, after that. But I never really leaned into it. I was like, well, I got nothing but time. Let's do a record label because that's cool to me. Now, again, I was starting a fledgling record label in 2012. <laughs> okay. Right, when and again, you may as well be trying to sell fax machines right, to somebody yeah. <laughs> if you're trying to sell them MP3s. It's yeah. about as smart of a business. Sense. I heard you were selling beepers at that time. So yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, I loved it. And I, I, I found a scene that I really dug into. You know, I had some friends in drum and bass. I had some friends in house music. But we really leaned into footwork and 160 music and footwork jungle and all that weird shit. Oh, that right. was, we were the first label in Florida to do anything like that. Really? It's a predominantly Chicago based genre. And in 2013, there was like nobody in Florida that knew anything about it, which was really cool. But, yeah. you know, we had no chance of building a following in state. Right, but, right. you know, I got flown out. I played some gigs in my label mate states. It was really fun. But most importantly, I got a lot of practice engineering through that. I mixed, I not only mastered, but I mixed every song that we ever put out. And we were fairly prolific in that two year period. There were a few, oh, probably 150, maybe 200 songs we put out in that time. And I engineered all. All of them. That's and a lot. Yeah. So you kind of really cut your exactly. cut your teeth on that, that whole experience. That so was the industry experience I'm I needed get, yeah. to be able to start charging for That's my smart. engineering. Um and it wasn't my plan at the time. I was just trying to, you know, pick up the slack. We didn't have much of a budget for the label. Right. Um, so, you know, I engineered it in house. My friends did graphic design for the album art. We kind of we wore all the hats in house. Right. It was kind of Every, a, you had to do yeah. Everything. You know, we were a kind of a tribal bunch. We were a close knit crew of people that put out music together. That's cool. and I you know I'll never regret that time. I didn't. I made like fuck all money off of it, but all the money I did make off of it went into gear for the studio. So I helped build the studio with that yeah, yeah. as well. So that kind of helped me get started in this thing. And during that time, I learned kind of the bare bones essentials of acoustics just so i could treat my room well enough that i could try an engineer out of it you know that was kind of where that kicked off um and all this was done in my parents third bedroom in fort myers wow i was fucking stuck in fort myers for five years before i climbed out of if any of you have ever been to fort myers you probably know what I'm talking. Well, I grew it, yeah. up in Daytona, so yeah. it's probably a lot like that. Look, anyway. they have beautiful um, beaches. No, but, yeah, of course. And the fishing I've heard is phenomenal. The thing I like, and they most, have golf courses. The thing I like I'm most, not interested in any of that. <laughs> the thing I like most about Fort Myers is Naples. Is leaving. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> or, or yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Captiva yeah. Island. Yeah, or, Naples, you know. Captiva is beautiful. Yeah, Captiva. Like, there's no two ways about it. Yeah. I love Captiva. Yeah, it's absolutely. Gorgeous. But you know, Fort yeah. Myers is very much Fort Myers, yeah. and I appreciate. You know, my heritage as a Floridian for the longest time, I really resented it. But, you know, (laughs) you know, because we're like we're like the Australia of the United States. Yeah, there's (laughs) nothing against Australia. I fucking love my Australian friends. We're all (laughs) shitheads in the same way. But, you know, and then over time, if you guys know Beaumont Stanford, I know you do. Yep, I sure do. That was the other great thing that happened for me in Fort Myers is. Well, no, I met him during undergrad. Okay, he just happened to be in Fort Myers. He moved back from LA to take care of his dad at the exact same time I moved back from huh. Miami and we started making records together huh. and just hanging out and like just talking about the philosophy of music and all right. this stuff. And during that time, like I grew up on rabbit in the moon. I grew yeah. up on dynamics too. And all that stuff. He's like, Matt, like that's in our fucking genetics, dude. Yeah, you know, no like doubt. that you're is right. something to be proud of being from Florida for. I was like, damn yeah, dude, you're, you're right. right. You know? Yeah. And like rink culture and all that stuff. That's our mark. Yeah, you're right. You know, like we like Florida breaks for what it wound up being like, that was a completely novel concept that came out of the state. We had totally. a wholly original concept that we, we're responsible for. And yeah. that's awesome. There's so many yeah, like, when you states think about in it. the U.S. that aren't responsible for shit in terms <laughs> of the development of oh, any make, musical culture. You make taffy here? You know, right. like, what is Ohio responsible for? Well, they you know? Gotta, you know, <laughs> there's some good Ohio people out <laughs> but, there. But, I mean, you I know, think. like, 
in the 90s, Orlando was like a mecca it really for the was. rave scene. I don't yeah, have really to tell really. you. Yeah. I mean, it was before my time, but yeah, I, I loved it. I'm kind of a, a, a hobbyist historian right, right. in electronic okay. music and disco. Like, yeah. I'm so into that. And like reggae culture, uh, sound system culture, all that stuff is so fascinating to me. I read every book I can possibly really? find because I, you know, it's a really underrepresented avenue of history. That's kind of being lost to mm. time. Like, there's so many incredible stories about disco I heard mm. from people that were there for it. That no doubt, you know, I don't want ever to be forgotten. You know, because they're so cool. Yeah. And like the jungle era, the the pirate radio era in the UK, like no God, doubt. and yeah. the outlaw right. parties and stuff. You know what I'm saying? But like, yeah. I'm proud that like being from Florida, we have some mark to contribute to that trajectory That's a great point. of electronic music. You know, and Can it I... took it took Bo. To get through to me on that, and I'll, I'll always appreciate. Bo is him. awesome. He is incredible. Yeah, I mean he, that dude. He kept my head above water through some really bad times in my yeah. life. Like, like I said, when I washed back up in Fort Myers, I was bummed, you know. And he was there. And he's like, "Yeah, Matt, shit, the, one thing shit about- sucks." I used to live in L.A. I was balling out there, you know. I had to come back here to take care of my and dad. Bo's gone right. through a lot of Brian, totally Brian, we've a lot been of bullshit. All the same stuff. And he's still able to keep his head up and keep other people's that head up. That dude is inspirational yeah, to me. Exactly. Like no he's, kidding. That yeah. guy is one of my best friends. Yeah. But um yeah, so I mean So that kind of caused you to say, "Hey, I'm going to you know, keep pressing yeah. forward I'm gonna with, get, with the studio idea. Yeah. Or, and I just kept developing You were like, it. let's nurture that music scene that's a distinct kept dumping every spare penny I had into it, you yeah. know trying to build it up because the thing about mastering is there is an incredibly high barrier of entry to doing this properly in the classical sense of what mastering is due to the shift in the industry. It's kind of grown into a cottage industry where more people are doing it out of their houses. In fact, some of the most famous mastering engineers these days are doing it out of their houses. My friend mm. Bob Katz, who I, uh, I'm i his assistant yeah. uh, over a digital domain in town, he wrote the literal book on mastering. He runs his place out of his house. Yeah, wow. and It's great. You go over there. It's digital like Digital domain? I didn't know you. There. Wow. And you know who told me about that? Who? Bo. <laughs> I called I called him. Well, let's like, call Bo. Okay, so right. <laughs> so like Bo knows. So okay, so after five years in Fort Myers, I was like, I have got to get the hell out of here right. because there's no jobs here. There's no work for me, right? right and I was yeah, like, right. okay, I'm gonna go back to school and get a degree in something that has a, a job market. Let's do that. <laughs> so I came back here and I started a, a master's in electrical engineering at UCF. Um, yeah. I was going to maybe see if I could roll it into a doctorate, just kind of play it just by Just tuck ear. up what your previous... You know, yeah, yeah. because like I want to get into electronics design and all that. So yeah, that I, cool. mo- I moved here and I started doing that for like, a, I was like a year in on that. And one day I was, again, super bummed out. I called Bo. I was like, look, man, <laughs> I feel like my life doesn't have meaning. Like, oh, man. I, I miss working in studios other than mine you know of any places around here that like might pick up an intern you know he's like he's like you know bob katz lives in this town and i was like what (laughs) 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 and you know so i called alan silverman who was my mastering professor because he bob used to live in new york for like 30 years like during the golden era of new york audio engineering he knew everybody so he knew alan and alan was like yeah, just just call Bob and say Alan Silverman says you have to meet him. I was like, in that many words, he's like, yeah, that should do it, <laughs> you know. Wow. Okay, so so I call Digital Domain, assuming I'm going to get a receptionist or something. Yeah, and, and, Bob and fucking too. Bob picks up the phone, and at first I'm like, this could be anybody, and then after like, you know, I introduce myself, I'm like, is this Bob Katz? <laughs> and he's like, yes, and I was like. Ah. <laughs> you know, I got like verklempt on You're him. I had to like, out. yeah, I had to like regain my composure. I was so starstruck. Wow. But I said, Alan Silverman says, I, you have to meet me. And he's like, oh, Alan, we better get you in here then, wow. you know? So, so I went to his That's place great. for the first time and he just started playing music. He was grilling me at first. He's like, okay, he's famous for this. Like, I've heard of him like bringing potential interns in and giving them hearing tests you know <laughs> so i was shook wow. wow he started playing music he's like what works in this engineering what would you change in this you know and like some oh, wow. of it was his work and some of it was other people's work that had tells 
of flaws in the engineering. And yeah, I never got any feedback from him. He was like, oh, OK, OK. You know, he'd move on to the next one. We did this for like three hours. Oh and then his gosh. wife, Mary, called into the studio and was like, would you give that poor boy a sandwich? He's been in there for three. It was just like... <laughs> And Bob Katz made me a sandwich, wow. and it was the most surreal experience Damn. of my life. And then we went back in there and listened to music for like yeah. another two hours. And he wasn't even asking me questions. He was just like, "Yeah, that's cool. Isn't this good? Yeah. Isn't my sound system good? Yeah. Isn't this great?" I was like, "Yeah, it is." And at the end of that, it was like eleven p.m. He's like, "All right, I'll see you Monday." I was like, "Wait, that was the interview? He didn't ask me a single question." <laughs> that's <laughs> that was amazing. it. You well, know, I think a lot of the times too, you know, it's like even with surveying. Uh, you know, different industries, different things that are, are trade skills. Totally. They look for they look for the comfortability. Yeah, make what sure you, you know, work with you. Your feel. You yeah. like what he's like. And if know, you smell like patchouli, you're out. Yeah. No, I'm just. You know, I mean, but you know, all Bob this. is your archetypal mad scientist type. If you envision a mad scientist, like that yeah. is he. Like okay. he runs a mastering house there, but he also develops electronics. He develops plugins out of there, some of which have very wide reach through the audio community. Like he's done UAD plugins. He has mm. a licensed UAD plugin. Wow. Um, like I said, he wrote the book on mastering, but like he does a lot yeah, of that's research like beats and for Dr. Dre kind of thing. Except good. <laughs> and, yeah. And, yeah. and you know, but he does so much development out of that place. And that was like an additional draw to me because like I said, I went to UCF because I wanted to start making an audio electronics and like hmm. that's the guy like my transfer console here he designed really? this yeah and this is the prototype that he gave me wow there's 10 wow. of these in the world and this was the first Jeez. one ever made um, but you know i mean the guy is so accomplished and so incredibly so that, smart and so weird just delightfully bob weird bob is you know so you kind of moved it you, you said wow i've got a serious um, mentor yeah. here. Oh, totally. Uh, and, and so did, was that kind of the... Yeah, I mean, we were thick what, as thieves where, what from year is this, then like, until 07, now. That, no, that would have been um, three years ago. That, okay. that would have been oh, wow. three years ago. Okay, so you had so already started I'd already... It. Well, yeah, I'd already been at UCF. That was after uh, I moved I here from Fort you. Myers. Right? So I know you're, uh, you're also, uh, you know, a professor, really. At, oh, yeah. At uh, Full Sail. Yeah, I wear a lot of hats. I'm yeah. a associate did, course director in mixing techniques at Full Sail. How did that come about? Chris <laughs> Domingo? Got, got three jobs. Damn. Three jobs. <laughs> so how I'm never that... going to forget being hungry. You know what I'm saying? Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you. No so, so how did the Full Sail come about? Okay, so first, in, in a word, Bob. Okay. Um, like, that guy... Like, we might fight like animals sometimes about stuff. Right. The way things are engineered, the way to do things. We're both very stubborn. Right. And, you know. Set uh, your ways. Yeah. And yeah. kind of smart and esoteric in our reasoning. So <laughs> yeah, we, okay. we clash, but we really respect each other. But, man, nobody in my career has ever stuck their neck out for me half as much as Bob has. Really? Bob has been in my corner since day one. I, remarkable. I got a part-time position at Valencia. Because he called the director of the program and was like, you need to hire this guy or you're a fool. You know, yeah. he's friends with him. He's like, you have got Just to like get the, the Al Alan. Like I said, the audio industry kind of runs on networking, you know, it's totally. in a huge way. And that was, I think, the biggest holdup for me early on was I didn't have anybody to vet me in there. Right. You know, that was the mistake I made. And then I'm hoping some audio student out there will listen to this and be like, I should get a good internship because. I, I stress it on my students so much. That is the most important thing you will do when you're in audio school is get some industry experience. Get some real life. Because, man, these guys won't pick up the phone for you unless you're in audio school. Like, that's the reason you go to audio school is get the time of day from yeah. people that specialize in what you want to do. So you got to figure that out and you got to get your feet wet before you get out of school because it's an exploding offer. And these degrees great kind of expire over time yeah you know especially the things that are so technology technically driven changes absolutely right. yeah absolutely you know um so yeah i mean bob was the reason i got the the gig at full sale too his recommendation carries immense weight That's anywhere great. in the audio industry he you know he got me in with pmc he got me in with crane song all these wow. developers that now i do you know beta testing for wow. i you know wow. i'm wow. kind of like 
in the family for in a way. Nice. It's it's it, kind of like you're you're sponsored by, yeah, by I mean, these companies. It, it was really incredible. And I think that was the thing that really sold Bob on me was he knew that for five years I was trying to learn how to do this thing yeah, in a the vacuum. Hunger, the passion. You know, like and that's how Bob was. Like he went to college for communications or something mm-hmm. and then he taught himself audio. Like completely yeah. by himself, and then he got an internship. But I think he really liked the initiative he saw in me yeah. that I was really passionate about this thing he does, and that I basically taught myself everything so far. Yeah, um, and that I'm also a dynamic range preservationist like him. Yeah. We're on the losing side of the loudness wars Aww. for anybody that doesn't know what that phrase means. <laughs> so what is that? Uh, briefly explain that. To oh us, Jesus! Then. Okay, I. So- What's the Mr. Bill song? Again, I don't want to get really political. And believe me, we have politics in uh, in mastering as much as anywhere else. Yeah. So basically, all right, where to begin? In the 70s. Where the sweet spot is, maybe. Well, in the 80s, yeah. late 70s, early 80s, I believe, there was this um, study done on radio listening habits. Okay. Right? right. By, you know, FM listeners. And they kind of just studied what their habits were if you gave them a radio and a dial to right, scroll. Okay. And they found this interesting correlation where the louder the music was from a given station, the longer they would stay on it. Interesting. Now this promptly wound up in the hands of label A and R's who were like rushing this to their uh their production teams like we Loud is the new hotness. We got to lean into that. That's that's how we're going to get people to buy our records, you know? Yeah, louder. And, you know, that is a reasonable assertion to make for somebody that has that level of immersion into how broadcasting works. But one thing that they hadn't taken into consideration uh, with their analysis of that study and response to it is that in every terrestrial radio broadcast station, there is a processor called a oct- Optomod, which okay. is a multiband compressor. Hmm. And what its job is, is to crush the living hell out of everything that goes to their right. transmitter. And the reason for that is a constant um, modulation of their carrier wave yeah. will result in stronger, um, you know, uh, 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 quality. Okay. It won't break up as much. You won't get static leaking in on the sidebands. As soon uh, as there's silence, and you probably notice it when they like go to commercials and they fade out, you can right. hear that hiss creeping in. Yeah. So here's the thing. Every radio station has these things configured differently to different loudness targets, mm. and it does not matter how you engineer a record because the kind of scope that you slam a record to right. isn't even within a, like, a deviation, a standard deviation of how loud they slam it on the way out in broadcasting. Really? So it doesn't matter how loud your record was. Yeah. It matters how they've configured their broadcast uh, transmitter at the radio station, but there were, there was no getting to, through to them. Uh, one of the interesting kind of threads oh, in, interesting. in audio history is that people mm. latch on to information and just cling to it with a fucking one death of, like, grip. Yeah. Live and die. Ever, regardless of if by... it's true or not. And half of the time, by the time like the truth makes it out, it's so ingrained into these labels that there's no coming back. And I swear that one singular study set off a chain of, that's fascinating of, of reactions that is still echoing to this day and is still resulting in us poor mastering engineers being pressured by our label and artist clients into making the records louder. Now in recent years, there have been Mm -hmm. developments in um, Spotify title, YouTube, Mm -hmm. Pandora, yada, yada, yada. They have these things called loudness targets and loudness analysis, where if you have over compressed the record beyond a certain point, they'll turn it down to level the playing field with records that aren't over compressed to try and remove some of the impetus for doing so in the first place. Um, But again, that information has not been enough to sway these A and R's from still wanting it slammed because it's got to be "quote unquote" radio ready, even though yeah, three people right. listen to terrestrial radio in 2019. Right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> we well, uh, yeah, they hang on to it. People, that, it's there, it's easy, it's convenient. But now we have yeah. you know the interloper. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, anything else but that, yeah. right? I, I um, mean, it's so damn unfortunate because like an entire well, generation of music has been just wrecked 
beyond, you know, being listenable. I mean, yeah. you know, in your car, sure. On earbuds at the gym, sure. Laptop speakers, right. whatever. But I promise you, I could play. It's going to sound crazy. I, I am not going to name any specific names because okay. I have a lot of friends in the mastering community, but mainstream pop records, mm-hmm. a lot of them would sound awful in here. You would in be this shocked town, in this room. by how incredibly awful. Really? They sound as a result of how hard they're pushed into limiters yeah, to get it louder. The like, distortion, the loss of, of huh. bass articulation, it's not the rich. whole works. Yeah, I mean, you lose the, you, you crush the, the life out of it. Analog richness. There's a dimensionality. Of the 70s and 80s, yeah. right? Yeah, there, there's a dimensionality. Okay. So you're on the purist side, apparently. Well, no, he's just not on the bullshit well, side. Well, yeah. I'm, you know, uh, like, it, I mean, you know this, is, this is one of the hard things is, like I said, I specialize in club music. Right. And un- yeah. an unfortunate thing in club music is we aren't beholden to loudness targets because the end listener yeah. isn't on it's Spotify. Right right it's here. in a damn club. Hell yeah. And yeah. I mean, the... The pressure, the the potential for uh, loudness envy is very real because <laughs> this track not only has to stand up to the next track being played, but they, they're being blended together yeah. by someone who has, at best, a tenuous grasp on how gain staging works. Right. Like, you could cook in some extra level for the quieter tracks, but if you aren't redline and you aren't headline, and you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... We're kind of <laughs> we're kind of still in trouble to a degree that the rest of the community hasn't been for a little while now. Yeah. So I'm very much on the front lines okay. of this quote unquote loudness wars. I'm not a prude about it. Yeah. I understand as an electronic musician and a DJ what you need to do to get something to function properly in a club environment. And I the know majority of people that listen just yeah. don't even know. Well, sure. Right? I, I mean, mean, I'm aware of not. how much aggression yeah. you need to get to get certain genres to, to, to sound like themselves, you know, yeah. but my holdup is, I believe that years ago we have gone beyond the point of diminishing returns mm. for this thing. And it's being perpetuated simply by, Loudness envy. Just, uh, People want to be louder than the last guy. It's kind of a point of pride for a lot of the electronic music community. In fact, a lot of the bass community yeah. is really fixated on how loud. And with that trap music yeah. kind of bass nectar. Yeah, and I mean, to mind. yeah, and it's really interesting because yeah. it's informing the way that these people are starting to arrange and compose their music in order to maximize loudness potential. Right. It's not as simple as just crushing something through a limiter harder. You have to have the right mix. The mix has to be made with intent to get that loud otherwise it's just an awful distortion and i mean i'm not gonna lie like some of these guys i don't like what they're doing but i respect the hell out of the way that they're doing it like they're really kind of innovating the bleeding edge of loudness Mm. for club engineering like some of my friends like bob mack and prash mystery and some of these dudes like Prash uh, mastered the last Prodigy album. Oh, okay. Wow. Incredibly gifted dude. Remarkable. Amazing. And I mean, don't get me wrong. This dude has done some purist records that'll fucking like blow your hair off. Like he did um, uh, Georgia Smith, her last LP. He did, uh, Mm -hmm. oh God, what's the guy's name? He put out this soul record. He kind of sounds like Sam Smith. Can't remember his name for the life of me, but beautifully mm. engineered, mm. tons of dynamics, a British cat. Oh, so good. Uh, you know, so he does really well, uh, living on both sides of the thing. But I personally, I, I have, I have my code that yeah. I don't break. You know, I got my number that I don't go under for anybody. Right. And I've gotten really good over the years at kind of screening them at the uh, onset when they approach me, you know, like usually you can tell in the way that they describe what they're going for. You know, if they say like, I need this loud as shit, you know, I'm like, here's a couple of my friends, Uh, you know, (laughs) this is Lewis Hopkins. He's very talented in this sort of thing. You know, (laughs) you know, I send them off to my friends, Klaus Hill, you know, I'm very supportive of my friends and I'll be the first person to say, I might not be the right engineer for you. Wow. Yeah, you know, and that I, takes balls, too. I, I mean, dude. You gotta I, be I, like, oh, whoop, 
Oop, no. I could be making a lot more money out of here than I am, but I've found that I've tapped into a really cool core client. It's about integrity. Which, yeah, I mean, which yeah. a lot of these guys and I love that, that come to me are the old heads. They're the guys yeah. that kind of pioneered this shit. Yeah, you know, like right. Charlie May, like uh, yeah. Justin from Friction and Spice. Really? I'm remastering the entire Friction and Spice, Friction and Spice back catalog oh, right wow. now. Some of it's uh, getting cut to vinyl. Night, Some of it's life. digital re-release, but it's all being done here. Every Chris. every cut. And I mean, Justin's amazing because he came to me. He's like, hmm. bro, I want you to cut this like a jazz record. I came to you because that's, that's what you great. do. You you know, like you know how to make a dynamic master. Right. And there's an art to making a really hot master. There's an art to making a really dynamic master. And a big part of that is just knowing when to not do anything, you know? What to leave. Yeah, like that. To... that is the subtlety of mastering. That's interesting. To me, is just figuring out when the hell to leave well enough alone. You when know? to and, stop almost. Yeah, right. totally. Right, I, gotcha. I mean, because the best master always will be a perfect mix that you don't have to do shit for. Everything that you right. do at every stage in the process incurs distortion. Some of my... All of the hardware I use here is is top shelf, you know, some of the the lowest distortion, lowest noise floor equipment that you can get in mastering, but it still comes at a cost. So well, you see, and that's a great point too. And we are getting pretty damn heady. Yeah. Uh, I'm here. very we're, sorry no, if this no, has gotten super tight. No, I, I love. I haven't it. even cracked into acoustics yet, dude. I, I <laughs> no, I love it because um, you know a, a lot of the times what you know we do when we learn about businesses is really get that business owner's expertise, sure. Sure. and that's what you're giving us now. Sure. You know, and a little bit, some of it, I think, is is not necessarily over our heads, but some of our listener base may be like, "What?" But I'm some of our sorry. listener base, no, don't be sorry. Yeah, who are we may speaking be with? Interested Interested. Well, that, that's exactly why I want to mention that because a, a lot of the times people will hear our show and it'll create a little thought pattern and, yeah. you know, oh, let me tell this guy about that guy. But right now we're talking with Matt Davis. We're inside a Hacienda Mastering. This is yeah, the are. JB Rev show. That was a hell of a great local legend session. And uh, now we're here present day. Right. And we wanted to talk about some of the equipment. Right, yeah, uh, sure, yeah. and, and maybe even if you want to b- boom on uh, some music, I don't know if that would come. It will through not. Really it will good. not come yeah, through. Not, yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah. T- I'm gonna trust you. Yeah, uh, <laughs> three point miking uh, no. yeah. a sound system with no. SM58. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we can't even get them up in the. It'll be a real phase jamboree. In yeah, there. so um, we won't do it. So you got enough time with us? Oh, you got about another. I got nothing 10 or but time. I blocked okay. out the whole evening for right. you guys. Another ten oh. or fifteen minutes or so, yeah, we can definitely dedicate to, and we'll kind of focus over a little bit more on the equipment so yeah. when, when uh you um put this studio how long has it been in this incarnation this is a uh, months old or a week old before or we crack into that yeah yeah uh you know i want to add the caveat at the end of that that okay. yes i like my music dynamic but i've learned over the years ways to cheat the system to get more dynamic masters to work in club environments okay. and that's one of the things that people are drawn to me for is I've found kind of the good balance point between dynamics for the sake of the sonics and squished enough to get it to work in a club. And it's a very fine line. And every year that line gets a little thinner, but you know, if anybody out there is like, Oh, I'm not going to send mastering to him. Yeah. If I'm, I'm not going to send mastering to this guy. He's a kook, you know, (laughs) you know, everybody has a code. My friend, Bob, he has a code that's more strict than mine. I am realistic. I know what the market is that I'm providing my service for. So I just want to get it out there that I'm not going to master your record like a jazz record. I just (laughs) would if I could get away with it. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) That's great though. Okay. So (laughs) no. Okay, cool. Well, no, I think too, um, You'd also, uh, yeah, before we get into the gear, though, you also provide services for acoustic uh, yeah. treatments and stuff like That's that, right? That's an interesting thing that I've cracked into in the yeah. last couple of years. So, um, yeah, so this is kind of a cool story. Um, right. In the last uh, year and, like, nine months, uh, I met my girlfriend. Uh, oh, sorry, dating my girlfriend, like, a year and nine months ago. That's fantastic. And we, were, oh. we were basically moved in what after What was your two- first date? What concert did you go see? Oh, uh, that would have been Calm Trues. Really? And it was, it was so great. We were standing there, and I looked to the right, and just there's Jerry. Just also, <laughs> he's like ubiquitous in Orlando. Yeah, like he, he will be there. I know. <laughs> I saw a picture of him. He's today. like a I'm scene like, golem. Do you know Shannon Burke standing right behind you? <laughs> yeah, Gary? of course I, was, I knew that was Shannon <laughs> Burke. Like, the, like, well, it, it was great. It was great. I, I like. I was like, 
Hey, Jerry. He looked over. He's like, huh, what's up, Matt? <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> it was great, you know, but, um, yeah, the, but yeah. The reverend. <laughs> so I got to say, your, your girlfriend's awesome. She, oh, she's incredible. Yeah. yeah. She's, uh, yeah. Yeah. There's, there's none other like her for sure. Um, and, you know, we, we're getting close to the end of our leases on our respective apartments. I was oh. running my mastering house out of this <laughs> dinky student apartment right yeah. by UCF. Okay. And it was miraculous that I got away with it with like a 1400 watt mastering sound wow. system no in shit. this shitty little apartment it was just like one of the nicer mastering rooms in Orlando. Um, but you know, our leases, uh, ended. So we got okay. this, we rented this house over in, uh, winter Springs. We went through this process where we toured a ton of options and I went in and measured the dimensions of the, the room and was like, this isn't going to work from an acoustic standpoint. I'd just be like in the driveway, ready to leave by the time they got in the house. <laughs> we, Oh my God. She is a saint for putting up with me. Fortunately, she's uh big into audio too. Um, that, but that helps. so we wound up at this yeah. bougie ass house in uh, Tuscaloosa, oh, right? Wow. Okay. It was these first time landlords who just <laughs> bought this house okay. and we move in and like the first week, the landlord shows up unannounced and he walks in and I'm like framing up a wall to change the dimensions of the living room to optimize it yeah. for the acoustics. And he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, you know, it's just a little DIY project. This is nothing. This is nothing. Changing the architecture. <laughs> you know, and so needless to say, we immediately came to an agreement with them that we shouldn't live there and that apparently I'm too weird to ever be a renter again. Oh, wow. Um, what? Yeah, so oh <laughs> imagine that, right? So yeah. we decided it was time for us to uh, buy a house yeah. together after dating for six months. Naturally. Because that's what you do, right? It's logical. Yeah. That's a next logical living the millennial you... dream over here, you know? <laughs> Me and my wife and I, the same kind of thing. We met each yep. other, fell in love, got married. Yep. So it's true. Yeah, don't so, knock it. So here's I mean, the thing. Works. So we got chased out of this house, and we had like, God, like three weeks left on my lease. Hers had already expired, so... We were crammed in this house with the studios, you know, and all of our stuff in boxes. You, had, it, you couldn't get through the place. There's so many boxes. And we started looking at houses. You know Andy Anderson, I'm sure, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. He was our realtor, and he's wow, one of okay. my acoustics and mastering clients. Okay, wow. And thank God, because he also has the patience of a saint, because uh. we looked at uh probably 70 houses in, wow, like, three weeks. God. It like, was so bad. It was uh. so incredibly bad. And again... I would pick these houses based on the merits that there may be a room that acoustically could work as a mastering wow. room. So I would go in these So you places, must have looked so weird. Checked all the dimensions <laughs> and was back out in like a minute. The people you that, know, in okay. these places that we drove to like, like Sanford to check out and stuff. We oh, went through man. every listing that was on the market in Orange and Seminole County um, by the time we found this place. Like we were about to give up. Wow. And it was so great. When I, when I came in here, I measured the walls and I was like, yeah, this will work. Let's. I'll take this one. You know, and Andy <laughs> at this point, Andy was all like haggard and like, yeah, I bet. You, you mean it? You yeah. aren't you aren't playing, Matt? For real? <laughs> this is the one. Oh, oh thank the goodness. Lord. You know, right? <laughs> oh, God bless him. So, well, this is a great so, little location. So, so you we kind moved. Of picked it. You said, "Hey, this is my intention. Yep. I'm going to build this badass studio." In I there. had really strict specifications, yeah. and this was the closest I could get to meeting them, and. uh this room was not a room when we moved in here. It was an open floor plan. There was a uh, kind of an archway into the kitchen over there, and this entire wall didn't exist over here. Yeah, so here. this was like more of a, a wraparound yeah, with the exactly. kitchen. Yeah, yeah. The little little kids yep. run around. And there were the two windows. There's a window there and a window there. This was like a dining room and den oh, combo. Wow. Yeah, okay. It was actually a very big room. This is a 21 by 12 room that now has... Uh, about 16 by 10 feet of floor space from all the acoustic treatment. Nice. Uh, I 15 know, by... Can I ask you, what, so this is a sound bath? Yeah, th well, those right? are diffusers. Yeah. Diffusers. There's, there's okay. two main uh, subsets of acoustic treatment. Okay. Uh, there are absorbers okay. and there are diffusers. What an absorber does hmm. is it traps incident sound. It keeps it from bouncing off the wall and coming back to you wow. or at least attenuating it. Um, diffusers, hmm. what they do is they scatter incident sound. Oh. Uh, you kind of you deploy those when you don't want to overly kill a room because right. this room is critically damped. Um, it is 
dampened cutting. yeah 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 that's yeah. that's the the you know formal term for it where right. you've dampened the room down to the spec that you're looking for or beyond hmm. um and you know in my case I, I couldn't quite get the dimensions that i wanted perfectly so i had to put in some serious leg work the trapping back there is two feet deep the trapping wow. on the speaker wall is four feet deep. That's the most recent thing I did was build the flush mount. And you did that is, by yourself, by by hand? I designed it myself. Everything in here I uh, mostly built. Towards wow. the end of the initial build when we moved in here a year ago, it was a two-and-a-half-month process wow. for me because I built all of these from lumber and fiberglass. Wow, yeah, and everything in here lumber, was fire, fire fiberglass. Glass. Okay. Uh, and some acoustic denim, bonded logic denim. Ah. I use that for some of the treatment in here. But um, yeah, it took months of eight to 12 hour days every single day because I had downtime. Like my clients were waiting for me. This is a theme oh, for yeah, me in the last yeah. year is like, oh. oh God, I got to get the studio back up. But I'm so but ambitious yeah. with trying to make my mastering room as good as it possibly can be. And, and you can't put it on hold. And you're, you're still like, not oh, done with yeah, it either. No, I'm, I'll never be oh, done. So right. That's yeah. the thing. Is so like, they were hanging out waiting. Yeah. I think part of it for me is like when I got into this stuff, I like I said, I did it in a vacuum. So all right. I knew of it was the cl- like mastering in the classical sense, in the historic sense. And historically speaking, mastering rooms are controlled to the highest possible specification of yeah. any listening room, any engineering room you would possibly use on the planet right. and like we wouldn't be able to do this technically it would, in one of those it would not be easy and to, it would not be cheap yeah yeah um especially if you hired somebody like me to design yeah. this and build it out for you right um but you know i've but, spent at least half of the value so anyway, of my sound system but i guess that's a good just on raw materials that's a good me. story uh wow. too matt because that kind of ties into you know you were saying people are just lighting you up hey i got this room hey, <laughs> you know it was the craziest yeah, it was, it was it's so like crazy. you're not even advertising that they're, not at all they're like, no, like hook, i didn't hook even me up acoustic man i didn't even <laughs> like, want to be an acoustician when i moved in here <laughs> i thought it would be a really cool kind of yeah, something to, push for my social media if uh, i just started just throwing massive amounts of data and information about exactly what I'm doing for the design of this place. Yeah. And it became this two month long multi-part mini saga. That's honestly <laughs> still continuing. I'm right. about to do the next installation of it for or the next installment of it for the new build. But I noticed in that time period, I got like 5,000 friend requests in like two and a half months. It was crazy. I capped out my friends list in like wow. a month and I was you know, after the first like putting... thousand, I would got really, you know, I really discriminated about who I was <laughs> adding to friends and who was followers. And I wound up with like 7,500 friends and followers at the end of it. Um, but I kind of made a name yeah. as somebody who knows what he's doing you were in just acoustics. putting out factual information. Yeah, You're totally. like, here, I'm discovering and, it, sharing yeah. knowledge. And one of my friends in the mastering community, Ian Stewart, he has some friends in the bass community out in Denver. And uh, one of the guys, Jade Cicada, who's a really big dubstep guy, he reached out to Ian and was like, hey, uh, you know anybody that does acoustics? It's really hard to find somebody that'll do like small room, especially like non-commercial acoustics because yeah. generally acousticians work on big big projects for a right. lot of money and like so the holes, so the... he had to really find somebody and ian reached out to me he's like i know you've been doing this stuff with your room you want to try that's this? awesome dude. And i was like yeah let's let's do this you know well because more and more people are having little home studios yeah. and you're like the king of yeah. this shit now <laughs> absolutely <laughs> and awesome. i've found that there's this niche where like a lot of these guys are famous yeah. but they don't have commercial spaces they can't yeah. like build new walls and crazy shit like that they have to work with the spaces that they have available to them and you know they can't get too intrusive about it they can't build yeah. stuff that's uh you know, you gotta walk into integrated a room and like, like my here. treatment is, where it's a comprehensive yeah, treatment. Yeah, you can't you pick know? it out. They're more like, here's the room I yeah. want you to work on. And I'm really good at working That's around things like that. And mm. also, one of the most important things that I picked up on from Bob, other than the fundaments of room analysis, which I learned from him, and then mm. I went crazy on it immediately. I was like, oh, oh man, wow. I am. Because I was trying to make my crappy apartment sound good. So I was like, this is going to save my apartment amazing you know <laughs> yeah. so like i leaned way into that and um 
and he also he put me onto DSP Acoustics, which is a incredibly contentious mm. uh, field in acoustics. Really? Okay. It's kind of panned as snake oil by people that I don't really? think do enough formal mm. empirical analysis of what they're doing, and also don't have a good enough perspective of what most people are trying to deal with in home studios. Mm. Okay. Uh, but I'm not. I'm not hitting that hornet's nest. Anyway, yeah, yeah. I very quickly became the guy, like in the industry for That's DSP remarkable. acoustics. I, you know, I install a couple different systems, uh, all of which Bob put me onto. My studio runs off of a flagship okay. DSP system, which is so incredibly high precision um, and powerful that it requires a dedicated computer to crunch the numbers in real time for it. And what it sort of does wow. is it picks up like the you're slack. mining for Bitcoin yeah. or something. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It's uh, I mean, it's it uses double precision 64 bit wave convolutions, which he had the guy that made the software, Uli uh, um, uh, Brueggemann. Sorry. <laughs> He wow. had to come up with a custom wrapper for wave files that was a high enough precision for what his ambitions were. Really? It's incredible. And I mean, it's given me a perfect um, step response in my room. This is something that would come out of a textbook. And this isn't. Wow. This isn't. Um, Are you showing us some. Uh, this images isn't on predictive. The now. This isn't predictive either. This is the resultant measured response. That's something. That A, you can't get out of PMCs. It doesn't matter how good you are at acoustics. You will never get this good of phase coherence out of these speakers. Every loudspeaker is designed with compromises and priorities. Mm. With PMC, their priority was subrange extension to the bottom of the earth without needing a sub, which is why I wow. don't have subwoofers in here because they are linear to 15 hertz in wow. here with a little help Holy from shit. the DSP. And I mean, you'd be lucky if you could wow. get that out of a 12 inch dedicated sub. That's so funny know? that you say that because that's what I thought. I'm like, well, yeah, where's the subwoofer? I, when I, I get that here, all like, the time. Everybody's like, where are you hiding? Is it behind the facing? Where are you hiding these subwoofers? <laughs> but no, it's these. That's why I love PMC speakers. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what you pay 44 grand for Damn. in part is not needing a sub because they're very slow and they're very distorted and they mess with the face coherence against the mains and it's just a hot mess to get them to work in a room mm. if you don't need them you're a lot better off right and you because don't need them with if these. you really just think about it i mean how can the sub be you know pushing the same sound as the speakers i have means the same? to do that and in fact uh accurate this program that uh, i use for my main filters in here has what's called a uh, sine wave convolution feature where you measure the response from the subs and you measure the response from the speakers and then you can perfectly time align oh, wow. them down to the sample so that the impulse comes out of the speaker the sub and the mains and arrives at the mix position at the exact same time. Regardless of how far apart they are in distance from the mix position, right. it'll align those two and give you perfect sample accurate phase coherence, which is incredible. <laughs> um, See, all of this stuff is, now we're getting back into the technical Yeah, I'm side very it, sorry. No, I promised you we get no, this No, 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 it's okay. Uh, no, yeah. I love it. I love <laughs> it because that's what we do on the summer tour. We go and we learn, yeah. you know, uh, about yeah. the, so you definitely it's have It's funny, I only got into this doing. in the last few years, but I've really, really like, this is become like a huge passion for me and honestly it kind of haunts me to a degree because as soon as i got my pmcs Something, it's always going I, I had a smaller set of these which i'm uh, i'm selling, selling like i said i'm driving Boston. them up to massachusetts for oh, my wow. friend um but as soon as i got them in my shitty apartment i was like man i gotta do right by these speakers <laughs> you know because most right. people don't really appreciate it but the sound of a room um has more impact on the sound of a speaker than the speaker does. 90% right. of the time in most rooms that you drop a sound system into, yeah. the bottleneck will be the room. So you'll have, you could have great speakers and just garbage sound because so, the room isn't doing it justice. I feel like my, my, my mouse That's now. where audio files fall flat. Because like, I, I, you know, I had this guy over and, Showing them videos, you know, I'm like, ah, I'm, I'm the, the kids conscientious kids. about yourself. I'm the most oh, elitist. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> now, now I'm like, oh man, I, I was like my paper, them. my paper airplane. I analyze things for what yeah. they are, you know. Yeah. But but I think the thing that's really paid dividends for me is I learned to do acoustics with the intention of designing a mastering room. So. I kind of had to think on my feet when I started getting calls from these guys. And believe me, after the first guy, 
Denver has a massive base scene. Really? Like yeah. all the most oh famous God. guys in the world really? live there and they're all yeah. friends. So they all yeah. go to each other's studios. So like oh, damn. like two weeks after I did Skylar's place, I get a call from um Chris Fortier. No, <laughs> Mr. Bill. Oh, okay. Mr. Bill. He's all like right. he's like, you Hi. know, he's like, Hey mate, Hi. I uh I went over to my friend Skylar's place and it sounds incredible Sick. in there and I want it. Um, you know, like <laughs> wow. And it just it's just rippled out from there. And so each one quickly. you do is like another little commercial. Yeah. For and I mean I've learned else. so much That's during awesome. that time. Um, that, you know, I go back out and I'll spruce up their rooms for them because I'm out in Denver so much. I'll go out there and give them once overs, you know, make sure they're up to my current specification right. for, you know, room analysis and, and correction. Do you know Rich Deckard? Boy, that name sounds familiar. Yeah, he or DJ Stu. Um, that also sounds familiar. Yeah, they used, they were uh, they were all working with uh, Debo and um, okay. back in the day. They actually hmm. the, um, might have met all had a house together. Debo and uh, uh, Stu used to live together up in Boston. Cool. And I think Deckard, too. Nice. But uh, Deckard's over in the UK. Anyways. I'm uh, digressing, but uh, I, Deckard's a. I know I've heard the name. Yeah, I may have. I may have met him. <laughs> um, you, Debo probably. introduces me to a lot of people. Yes. Some, I so, love Debo. It's kind of how I got so into mastering little, for big names with things. Yeah, let's Debo. talk about that a little <laughs> bit too. Let's get back to the mastering yeah, yeah, a little sure, bit too sure, from sure. the acoustic. But yeah, let's do a little name dropping too. I mean, sure. we, I, I actually I, had a question about yeah, that. yeah shoot. So, um, you know, let's first. I want to. Uh, who's one of the uh, the your most. Uh, the artists that you've worked with so far that you are most impressed with that you are excited to work for like Goo Goo Gaga fanboy. Yeah. You <laughs> like mean like, starstruck oh or God. you mean yeah. in terms of, wow, this program yeah, material Cats, is incredible. No, no, no. I mean like, yeah. do you mean like, wow, this guy's famous as fuck? Or do you mean somebody who you're like, this track has knocked my socks off? Both. Both. Yeah. Okay. Well, I've, um, I, I did a master for a remix for Charlie May okay. recently yeah, of, yeah. you know, say. Sasha fame right. and that whole lot. And, right. uh, Barry Jameson did the mix for it. It's beautifully done. Just amazing engineering. You played that. that for us. Already. Yeah, I played that. Yeah, was, uh, that was the first amazing. thing I played for you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's probably that like was... probably the most high profile master I've done so okay. far. Oh, wow. Um, Mr. Bill keeps saying like, when are you going to do a master for me? But I got to uh, tell hey. you, that man is incredible at self mastering. Like usually right. that's the thing you don't do is master your own music right. but man he's got it down to a science and he's got a mastering grade room to do it in there so uh, yeah <laughs> so he doesn't need me he doesn't need so you here's anymore. the second part of this okay question. but in terms of music that's really blown me away yeah i just got this new client seth Bo uh Vogt, that's right and okay. Oh man, yeah. I love his style. He's got yeah. he's got like the essence of that early thousands kind of like progressive mm. type stuff. Working like, with all the dimensions. He's got stuff that kind of like sounds a little bit like BT at his best, you know. Okay. And I mm. grew up on that stuff. Right, right. He is so talented. His voice leading and top melodies and and just the entire arrangement process and sound design for what he does is really good and That's his mixes awesome. are pretty good too and i'm every time i get a track in from him i'm like fuck yeah <laughs> do a so, Seth track you how know about, how about this matt who's an artist that you would really just be starstruck to work for someone oh, that you would geez. like somebody came really out of like nowhere to, yeah. and was like oh. someone that you really would want to work for. god okay you know louis vega really wow. oh that would be the biggest compliment to me oh okay. god because you know he came out of that era of I mean, the whole way back to the garage, right? Like, yeah. he he went to the Paradise Garage yeah. when he was super young, and, like, that's where he cut his teeth, and, like, that was what he was influenced by, and that's huge for me, too. I mean, I never went there, but I know all the stories. I've heard all the music that got broke there. Like, it's, right. it's a big, you know, that's an important lineage for me. And his music, like, he was the first, like, super high-profile remixer i think or one of them anyway him and kenny dope right you know and i love what they did they jelly bean this, too about that jelly time. bean benitez as yeah. well i mean hell you know tom moulton right was the original but i mean in terms of house music yeah, and yeah. just once they got crazy famous the 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 passion projects that they embarked on like new year reconsole elements of life um wow. yeah. incredible you know like their live uh, band is kind of like um like pedal pusher or like uh um tortured soul you know okay. they're in the same they're cut from kind of the same cloth and right. i really respect the hell out of it because they've 
added that bridge to disco in the form of live performance. Yeah. That was such an important fundament of disco that's being, you know, maintained through right. house music. I really enjoy when I hear that part of their history kind of shining through in house music. And nobody does it like Louis Vega and Kenny Dope and maybe Kevin Hedge from Blaze. Like those okay. guys are incredible. And I mean, they really care about their engineering quality. You know, like maybe not their super club directed stuff but some of their passion projects that they did like you can tell that they cared a lot about the sonics of that recording hmm. and i you know if i got the chance to do something like that that would be a huge compliment that's awesome. for me that's basically the club equivalent of like mastering for steely dan right. or something you know what i'm saying <laughs> stevie wonder yeah totally oh, was. yeah yeah that's cool. All right. Well, we're talking. Uh, thank you, Matt. Very informative. Uh, we're talking with uh, Matt Davis of Hacienda Mastering, uh, really getting into uh, uh, kind of the ins and outs. And thank you so much for sharing everything, specifically in regards of the breadth of knowledge that you have with the, with the equipment, with the no industry doubt. in general. No, really. It's phenomenal because, you know, we kind of both are co- little DJ, little radio kind of, you know, background. Yeah. Both of us kind of yeah. have that. And so, so we constantly love to stoke of those fires so when we were coming over here we're like dude this guy's uh, like i didn't know what to expect i was like but dude this guy's gonna i remember when i first told him about it and i would just send him your profile and stuff he was like responded back like holy shit dude (laughs) and i was like yeah yeah yeah. too kind well no and and to actually be in here you really and because you know we're our little you know self-proclaimed studio at our place and we do the internet radio stuff you know we go all around (laughs) but this is not mastered you know we're we're putting out a decent signal it's a decent clip people can hear it there's no static right that's where i was but you know, I, exactly. I used to do I used to do a weekly broadcast yeah. out of my studio. And we used to do a podcast. Would you ever my do label. that again? You know, I mean, if the label, uh, if I started the label up again, yeah. the thing for me is fucking time. What was the man. little show? Yeah, you know, it I think was, you told us it was a called, little about it. Was called Renegade Radio. I Are used you, to be. Yeah. Uh, my handle was the Renegades when I did okay. like drum and bass, yeah. footwork. And what time of year? Bass music. Or what time of year? <laughs> <laughs> what year? That would have been like uh, 2012 oh. through 2013 ish. Yeah, that's cool. That is cool. Yeah. So, I mean, I totally dig what you guys do and like like i was saying before we started like i'm in oh, flashbacks well, to when we used to do yeah, it yeah and know? that's why i wanted to bring that up yeah too, broadcasting is so cool i got a hell of a lot of cred. respect yeah you, well you've got that cred too and we do everything on the fly right we didn't script yeah. out yeah, this interview yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we don't script things yeah. <laughs> we try to keep it real organic and loose but so to that spirit some uh you know beautiful kind of a culmination here you know we want to encourage people if they're interested in what you do or they want to refer you to somebody please do it go to haciendamastering.com the best way to communicate there but yeah. other than that you in closing uh we asked you a little bit about the future are there different uh, you know, styles of music that you had mentioned, hey, I never really played the guitar. In the future, do you see yeah. yourself maybe 10 years from now, like, hey, I really <laughs> never thought I'd get into this, or yeah. hey, I always wanted to pick up the keyboards a little more. Well, is there anything you kind of got on your radar? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the funny thing is that, like, I specialize in club music, yeah. but I have a mastering house that you could master purist music in easily. Yeah. I've overbuilt the spec for this place well beyond the demands of club music, not to, you know, minimize the demands no. of club engineering, but I mean, I could be doing jazz records out of here. I could be yeah. doing orchestral records. Right. You know? I could be doing, you know, hmm. folk records out of here. <laughs> Genres that have a very yeah. high expectation of excellence from the mastering. Right. And also I'm the protege be of doing an Steely engi- Dan out of here. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to. And I'm the protege of a purist engineer and I've right. assisted on so many sessions in those worlds, I, you know, I could jump into that. I would like to jump into that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm not hell bent on doing nothing but club music, but you know, it's all networks, you know, it's all people communicating to each other within your clientele. Yeah. So you never really know kind of what that makes. I do kick loose. Yeah, I, I like, do a little bit of pop. I do a little bit of rock out of here. Um, you know, yeah. not a ton. Most of it's through Andy. In fact, okay. he's the mixer for a lot of it. Oh. And he sends it to me for mastering. That makes sense. But um, I do some hip hop. I do stuff like that. But yeah, I, I'd love to to broaden my horizons Just because keep... mastering is universal. Well, I think, it, it, and, right. you know, if you aren't, if you're doing it for the right reasons, 
it's universal. Your job is to make it sound as good as it possibly can. And right. our our vision has been clouded over recent years by prioritizing loudness. And we've kind of thrown the baby out with the bathwater in yeah. terms of that, you know, because there everything is compromise in mastering. It's the art of moderation. There's no bad frequency. You just need not too much, not too little. And the same thing with dynamics. You know, you need to get it into that sweet spot. And I so think you need... if you can master with that in mind, it doesn't matter what you're mastering. So right. you're kind of just totally, and that's what I like about you. You're totally open minded for the totally. future. You're like yeah. somebody could come in here with a triangle By band. By all means, yeah. <laughs> you could do the yeah, totally. record your triangle, triangle band. band. And it, yeah, like the little yeah. triangle. Yeah. Ding, yeah. Dong, ding. Probably a pretty good room for recording triangle. It would be no. It's a great. <laughs> well, Matt, we appreciate you having us uh, over here. Um, in closing, though, we have another track, and now it's a pretty long track for yeah. mm-hmm. as far as not a three minute song. Um, you know those progressive heads. They, so uh, brevity is not their <laughs> yeah. So I thought you yeah. So I thought you'd uh, c- uh, be able to cue this up for us here. And this is the original uh, sure mix is the one that he did. Yeah, it's the okay. original one. Yeah. Sandra yeah. and Mickey. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's yeah. What okay. I've got so this is uh, this is seven by Sandra Collins. Oh, so wait before we go oh. there. Thank you so much. I want to oh. thank you, brother. Thank, thank you. you. No, it was really great to be here. Thanks the Rev and I are super uh, super it. grateful <laughs> to be here, bro. Seriously though. Um uh, so we're going to close out with uh, this track that you had yeah. in some involvement in. You're going to give us a little history there. I mastered it. Yeah, I, yep. I was the mastering engineer on this. Uh this is 7 by Sandra Collins and Mickey. This came out on Stripped Records like a couple months ago. They've got a lot more really good stuff like this coming out in the near future. Um, to look out for, including the yeah. track, uh, the remix that Charlie did that oh. I mastered. I I can't play that for you. It's in yeah, the promo no, right now, but no early worries. August. <laughs> nice. No yeah. worries. Oh, that'll be released August. Yeah. Well, early feel August. free to keep tagged up with us. We'd love to stay in touch with you. Oh, I definitely you know, because like next week we're going to groundingroots.com. Uh, they have a location right up here. They do cold press juices and oh, all this cool. stuff. Yeah, such yeah, a cool place. Into- so the cool thing is we interviewed him like a year ago. He came to our studio. Now we're going to his second business location. Nice. So we'd yeah. like to stay in touch with people. First on one him. did so yeah, well. We'd like to second location. We'd like to stay in touch with people and and not just say, hey, the interview. Over, I, I can't thank you enough so, for you know yeah, you rock, dude. including yeah, the community like this trying to you know get the word yeah, out about without what, question because it's I've noticed throughout my mastering career you really don't get a lot of local representation. Right. It's not the sort of place that yeah. like the local paper will yeah, it's feature unusual. you. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like, you guys are the first ones yeah, that have well, ever approached me. We I'm love like to this. go to the I'm places. I'm really grateful to you. Yeah, well, thank you. I think you. you should get used to it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, right. Now that we're we're yelling and screaming all about you over here, people will uh, hopefully find out. But uh, hang over there. Hang over there. We got uh, phone lines. Oh, we got the, the phone lines open. Yeah. I don't know. We're going to go to this. Tra- I'm going to close out the phone lines uh, so nothing else comes in through there oh well this is seven sandra collins mickey mastered by the man himself we'll see you next week from grounding roots here at the Haas. jb rev show i'll see you mastering with matt davis thanks bye matt.
WJDW, Orlando, Florida. The first quasi-radio web show. Wow. Yeah. 